Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. It's October, Halloween month, and in honor of that, I'm going to make it Vincent Price month. I'm going to hopefully review a Vincent Price movie every week of October. And this week, it's House on Haunted Hill. Cue badly Photoshop title card. <laughs> See? Wasn't that nice. May I introduce myself? Well, sure, floating head. I'm Watson Pritchard. Well, isn't that nice? But in all seriousness, his character owns the house, and he goes on to explain that there have been seven murders inside of it, including his brother. But enough about him. Let's meet the guy that we all want to talk about. <laughs> I'm Frederick Lauren. Well, there you are, Vincent Price. And I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party. A haunted house party. <laughs> She's so amusing. I have a strange suspicion that you don't like your wife very much, Vincent Price. He continues to explain to the audience that anyone who's willing to stay in the house for the night, 12 hours, will get $10,000. And that if any of the guests were to die, their 10000 would be given to their closest kin. The only problem with this, though, is that later he explains to the actual party-goers that if any of them die, the 10000 gets split evenly among the survivors. So it's a little inconsistent there, but otherwise, okay. This is Lance Schroeder, a test pilot. So no doubt a brave man. But don't you think you can be much braver if you're paid for it? And I happen to know that Lance needs the 10,000 I'll give him, if he's brave enough to stay all night. This is Ruth Bridges. You've no doubt read her column in the newspapers. She says her reason for coming to the party is to write a feature article on ghosts. She's also desperate for money. She also has no real contribution to the plot. You've already met Watson Pritchard. A man living in mortal fear of a house, and yet he is risking his life to spend another night here. I wonder why. He says for money. This is Dr. David Trent, a psychiatrist. He claims that my ghost will help his work on hysteria. But don't you see a little touch of greed there? Around the mouth and eyes. This is Nora Manning. I picked her from the thousands of people who work for me because she needed the 10,000 more than most. Supports her whole family. Isn't she pretty? Creepy Vincent Price is creepy. Well, where is everybody? It isn't a very warm welcome, is it? Only the ghosts in this house are glad we're here. Way to be a buzzkill, man. But basically, that's his character. Other than giving out exposition about the house, every scene he's in basically winds up to, Oh no! Someone is dead! What are we going to do? Billy, what do you think? We're all going to die. The characters then introduce themselves to each other, presenting the fact that none of them have ever met, and in fact, none of them have ever met Vincent Price's character. And then a chandelier gets almost dropped on Nora. Happiness. <laughs> I'll give you three guesses about who the love interests are going to be. And the first two don't count. We then meet Vincent Price's character's wife, Annabelle, and they exchange some lovely banter with each other. The headline, Playboy Kills Wife with Champagne Cork. But I'm sure other than that, their relationship is very happy and... You remember the fun we had when you poisoned me? <laughs> Something you ate, the doctor said. Yes, arsenic on the rocks. Annabelle, you'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? Darling, what makes you think that? Something about you. I hear that hanging is very uncomfortable, in case you get any more ideas. But don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you, darling. Darling, the only ghoul in the house is you. Whoa! She tried to kill him? Oh, okay, okay, Vincent Price being the bad guy is out. No way. She's the bad guy. Because Vincent Price is way too easy, and she's actually the only one who's committed a crime up until this point. Vincent Price then gathers them together and explains the rules, that they'll get $10,000 if they stay for 12 hours, and adds the pact that they will be locked in, and at midnight, the caretakers of the house 
will leave and they will be locked in and all the windows are barred and there's only one way out the front door. Which I have to question, how, how is a house that massive only have one door to the outside? But, you know, whatever. And then Pratchett takes them on a tour through the house. See that stain? Blood. A young girl was killed here. And whatever got her wasn't human. Don't stand there. What do you mean? Where? Ooh, spooky. And then they go to the cellar where it is revealed that there's a pit of acid in the floor instead of where wine could be because a man murdered his wife by pushing her in there. And, and it's still there. Hmm. Plot convenience. Also, Nora thinks she sees a ghost. And, th and then she thinks she sees another ghost. Annabelle uh, tries to sow the seeds of discontent. And then Nora finds a head. And then she's also grabbed. The ghost Nora saw and the man that grabbed her end up being the caretakers for the house. And that they're going to leave at midnight and they're the ones who are going to lock it up to make sure everyone stays inside. The only problem is that doesn't really happen according to plan. Midnight yet? Who told them they could leave? They never leave before midnight. Well, they've gone now. I was going to ask you whether you wanted to stay or not, but it seems that the caretakers have made the decision for you. We're all locked in now. Also, because of the stuff Annabelle told her and her experiences with the caretakers, Nora now believes that Vincent Price wants to kill her. And that won't come back to hurt anybody because, I mean, it's not like anyone's got weapons or anything. This is my wife's idea. And I must say, I think it's rather dangerous. I suppose you all know how to use one of these things, but in case you don't, you just press down on this lever with your thumb and then pull the trigger. Guns? They all have guns now? They're all locked into a house and they have guns. And Nora thinks that Vincent Price's character wants to kill her and now she has a gun. Yeah, that was definitely his wife's idea. After failing to show the others the head that she found, Nora disappears and Lance goes to look for her. Finding the head himself, he brings it downstairs and f tries to find out where she's gone. But then he hears a scream and sees a body dangling. It's at this point I interrupt the video to say that if you want to watch the movie without spoiling the ending, which I suggest that you do, it's a great movie, go and see it, then stop the video now and go and watch it. It's on Netflix and it's also on YouTube for free. But if you don't mind spoiling the ending or any of the real plot, then keep watching. Nora? Psych! It was not Nora, who was hanging there, it was actually Vincent Price's wife. But I mean, you just saw that, so I guess I didn't have to explain it to you. But Nora was actually perfectly fine. She was in the basement unconscious because she was assailed by someone she assumes is Vincent Price because he was trying to kill her. And now they both believe that Vincent Price thinks she's dead, so they're going to use that to their advantage. The rest of the group meet in the main room. Coming to the conclusion that it was, it was in fact a murder and not a suicide, the group becomes at odds for Vincent Price thinks it's one of the party goers and the party goers think Vincent Price did it. Since none of them actually knew her, so none of them had a reason to. They all decide to go back to their rooms thinking that that's the safest plan since the innocent have no reason to leave their rooms and the guilty will be caught and be known as the guilty if they leave. <laughs> Yeah, that, that scene doesn't mean anything. 
Lance returns to Nora's room and informs her about the situation and then tells her he's going to go look for a way out because he wants to be able to get to the police before Vincent Price could kill any more of them. You know, or he could get caught leaving his room and be accused of being the killer. Whatever, macho man. Though he may have discovered a way out, finding a secret passageway behind a wall, he disappears for the rest of the movie. Yeah, he, he's gone. Well, actually, they do find him alive and well behind that wall later. It's just, that's after the plot's been resolved. And then, Nora's attacked by the power of reversing the footage. Oh, no, it's, it's the ghost of Vincent Price's dead wife. Th that. She is so scared of this, she runs out of her room and straight into the hall downstairs, right into the hanging ghost of Vincent Price's wife. And a furry arm. Have you seen my glasses? I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> to be honest, I'd be scared of that obviously added in later music too. Did you hear anything? Organ music, that, and someone walking. Wow, that psychiatrist must have pretty good hearing to hear footsteps over thunderclaps and Nora's blood-curdling screams. Shock of all shocks, it turns out Vincent Price's wife is not dead and in fact in cahoots with the psychiatrist. Their plan was to make Nora so paranoid and crazy that she would in fact shoot Vincent Price. Yeah, in... And she does. Come to think of it, if she was Vincent Price's alive wife and not Vincent Price's dead wife, how, how did she get outside Nora's window? Oh, well, back to the plot. Has Vincent Price's alive wife won? Or do the ghosts of the house have something to say about it? No, but this crappy looking skeleton does. indeed perfect. Only the victim is alive and the murderers are not. It's a pity you didn't know when you started your game of murder that I was playing too. <laughs> and that's pretty much the end of the movie. Um, they find Lance in the door in the wall and they get him out and then they all confront uh, Vincent Price and he basically t says He's willing to face testimony because it was an accident. Uh, the doctor tried to kill him, he pushed him in, and the chick tripped and fell. Which is actually what happened because there's no way that science room plastic skeleton could have pushed her into that. In fact, you saw her stumble. She knew the pit was there. She didn't move. So I could say that death is her problem. Oh, and the whole being shot thing was uh, he filled Nora's gun with blanks. Wow, he was really smart. Vincent Price is at his best to me here when he's subtle and menacing. I mean, he's wonderful when he's a large ham and we'll probably get to at least one of those movies where he's a large ham. But he's just so good when he's sinister and just 
And you know, one of the cool things is this movie was extremely low budget. No, there was no budget, but they explained it away. They explained the bad effects away because in the contu continuity of the show, the people were doing the monsters. There weren't any real monsters. So all the bad looking effects were explained away, except for the blood. That, that's the best effect and probably really ghosts. Did I mention that lady has nothing to do with the plot? Um, yeah, so uh, tune in next week when we review another movie, probably Witchfinder General. I think that's the name. But yeah, if you liked it, like it. If you f loved it, favorite it. And if you like me, subscribe and, you know, share it with your friends. Watch it a billion times. I don't care. Also, uh, put in the comments if you like this. I mean, I did. I like making it. So I want to see if you do. Give me your real responses. Thank you. And good night.